camera just cut out again. Then I must go into settings and reset, reset the camera. Um, so now I've lost my train of thought. I was talking about how pathetic the guinea fowl parents are. And um, so <clears throat> with all the walk and the crow activity here to get those little kids, I don't know, we will see how many actually make it. But there's still going to be a few more broods hatching because breeding season has only begun. That, that's the second, second brood. So the people kind of like to watch the um, wild birds actually the most. But yesterday, how many footage do I now get of wild birds? I'm actually fortunate that I actually got as many as I do. Um, then it's my animals. Um, some people just vlog the, the daily lives of the animals, their, their pet animals, which I have plenty of. <clears throat> I was considering doing that, but my animals doesn't really get up to um, much antics. And um, I don't, I, because I've got such, so many things and and delicate situations of balancing things as far as the animals are concerned here at home it's difficult for me to load the dogs in the car and take them to the beach and do something fun with them also because i'm alone it is not safe to go to the beach and the beaches that i can take them is very isolated so that's not a good idea at all um so what to do what to do <clears throat> And he said to me, very interesting enough, because he's here all the time. He said to me, no, why do I want to stop doing these personal videos? Because he's a follower. And I was stunned. My mouth was actually dropping open. I said, really? He said, yes. Um, so, yeah, I will now make them for those who want to listen to, to them. They can. For those who only want to listen to 10 minutes they back and for those who doesn't want to listen to it at all they don't have to so i will my carry on with it and um, maybe if i hit the correct um, word in the title for the analogs it might go a little bit, bit, bit better because i'm definitely not sucking this out of my thumb these are all things that really and truly happen so i am going to go back to some of the events that took place um, <clears throat> with me as a child. Um, one of the things that sprang to mind was, um, and maybe I couldn't fault my dad, maybe he thought because I, I liked sport that he was going to pursue this with me as well and see if it didn't go better. But why, I don't know, because you will also have the problem of a starting gun with the added problem of having to dive into ice cold water. <laughs> but our swimming career, my swimming career, for some other reason, my two elder sisters weren't pushed into a swimming career. They did ballet and dancing. I don't know why my mom never gave me the opportunity to do ballet and dancing. I think I would have liked to do dancing, uh, being exercised and also expressing music, not having to make the music and perform the music. I think I would have loved that. And please no, not gymnastics, because I could see that I would have been pushed into the direction of gymnastics. Everything that would scare me, I probably would have had to go on to the, um, what's the bulk? And yeah, <clears throat> not just, uh, no, not gymnastics, please. There's too many things there that can scare the living daylights, daylight, daylights out of a person. <laughs> anyway, so <clears throat> Gray High School is quite a, uh, a up market uh, school in Port Elizabeth. It's got a, pr a, a primary and secondary section, uh, <clears throat> an elementary. A, a primary and a high school, elementary and a secondary school, and they've got boarding facilities on the grounds. My dad used to go to Gray, but he, they just stayed diagonally across from Gray. So he was a, a, a alma mater of Gray High School. And they um, <clears throat> are one of the top schools in, in Port Elizabeth. I don't know how they are ranked in South Africa. Um, <coughs> and that's also where I took that music and that box of music 
is still standing in exactly the same place in my garage. So I should actually make a point of, oh, that dove is bathing in the sun. But I know I can't stop this to, to show you. Um, so they have a swimming pool. Obviously, the, the, the students can um, have the privilege of having, if they swim or do water polo or things like that, then they've got a, 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 a swimming pool on the grounds. And the caretaker of the grounds house is right next to the swimming pool. <clears throat> and as a good parent, and I'm not talking about say I'm talking about 50 years ago. So that's a long time ago. We didn't have these wonderful, in my dad's defense, these wonderful little uh, schools and facilities where you can take your baby as a baby to make them water wise and teach them how to swim and how to turn themselves over. Very fascinating to actually watch the videos on how they do it and how the children actually um, the little babies actually uh, get to do that right, to stay afloat or to get themselves to the side of the, of the swimming pool. Very, very, very interesting. And um, <clears throat> that was his choice to take us for our first swimming lessons, our survival skills to swim with a caretaker of grey school who was an old guy with a walking stick. So he did not go into the water with you. You were in the water and he was standing on the side of the pool. And if you start to sink, he would hook you under your arm with the hook part of the water, walking stick, you know, walking stick, a cane. Now, can you imagine what that must feel like for a small child to have that hook, that wooden hook, hook here under your arm to keep you afloat when you start to sink in the water? That is enough to put any child off swimming for the rest of their life. And I know you, maybe some of you would say, gee whiz, but you're negative. Gee whiz, you hate everything. Yes. If that is the way that you are approached and if you are treated as a child, never mind being a hypersensitive child, you learn to hate your life and you learn to hate your environment. Pardon me. Unfortunately, that is the reality of the situation. You have not a love relationship for the fact that you are alive on this planet. You have a hate relationship with everything. You, I suppose I can say that you become negative. You experience your surroundings and your circumstances as negative. You start, if you have parents that break you down all the time, with the assistance of teachers, belittling and humiliating you all the time, forcing you to do activities which you have no um, talent for, uh, then of course you are going to begin to have a negative, hateful relationship with everything around you. In any case, um, so that was our uh, first experiences with swimming. Needless to say, none of us wanted to go for these swimming lessons. It was a fight every single time that ha we had to go to these lessons where you are going to be hooked under the arm with a wooden, with a wooden hook side of a walking stick. And um, so from there, my dad decided that it was a good decision to take me for further swimming lessons, which then was at Elliot's, a well-renowned swimming school. I'm not sure if they still exist. They might, might even be still in existence. But I was now not only going to learn to do freestyle, um, now I had to do breaststroke, I had to do backstroke, I had to do butterfly. <clears throat> I must now do the whole, whole scope. In his defense, maybe he thought I like sports, maybe it will go a little bit better than the athletics. All good and well, until the point where I developed ear problems, eardrum problems in my left ear. Now, Roland developed some eardrum problems as an adult. 
I think not so long ago. They also had to fit him with it. Oh, there's an Egyptian goose sitting on the light, looking at me with a black spot here on his. Um, he eats some of the some of the corn, the lilies that I throw there as well. But I think his partner is on a nest somewhere. <clears throat> Any case, he had problems with his ear drum, and they also put a grommet in and. For some other reason, they removed the grommet again. I don't really know why. I started to have, I'm young. So let's say I'm nine, eight, nine, ten years old. No, it was younger. Seven, eight, nine years old. I started to have problems with my left ear. So much so that the pus started to run out on my pillow when I sleep at night. Now, Roland can tell you how painful that was. I think that he said it was some of the sores that he's he that he has experienced a, 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 a pain level and he was a grown adult man and i <clears throat> i'm a little girl in and out uh, with the ear throat and nose specialist um, in the end my eardrum burst and they had to put the grommet in so now swimming and having constant water in your ear has become a very, very bad idea. Not such a good idea. But for my father, that meant absolutely nothing. So every time I had to go to swimming, my father pushed these little ear plugs into my ears. I think a lot of swimmers swim with them in any case to prevent constant water from getting into the ear. But by that time, it, it was too late. That should have happened before I developed this problem, this extremely painful problem with my ear. And to push plugs into your ear when you have a painful ear was just not a good idea. In any case, eventually, I don't know what happened. It was, I can't remember that I um, um, protested much. I, I think there was some a protestation going on when he put the forced the plugs in but um, I don't know why that fizzled out I can't my memory my memory is not there as why that eventually came to an end but that eventually came to an end and um, I never became the South African representative of swimming in any of the events um, <laughs> Then I uh, played netball, <clears throat> still in elementary school. I was a, a, a very good netball player. Obviously, um, I, I wouldn't have been able to make it my career because I don't have the length. I stopped growing. But, I mean, who cares if you are in elementary or primary school? Your goal is not to make that sport your career. And... Um, I was really very good at it and I enjoyed it because it was a team sport and I loved it because there was no, I wasn't under a, a, mic, a microscope, um, I didn't have to do, to perform and the sole responsibility of me didn't rest on me to be a success and to be this star. And I really loved it. I really loved it and I became very good at it. But then, for some other reason, my mom developed a problem with me um, playing netball. Can't remember what her problem was. But she said that my marks aren't good enough and if my marks do not improve, then I will not be allowed to carry on playing netball. So much so that the principal actually uh, contacted her to sort of not big but ask her you know if I am such a, a asset to the netball team if I if she wouldn't reconsider if my marks wasn't that bad um, I was just not standing first second or third in my class <clears throat> no she decided that my marks wasn't good enough I wasn't allowed to play netball anymore and I had to stop even the principal's pleadings didn't help. Um, at home, the following happened. We had 
very long blonde hair. It was uh, down our backs. Um, if we sit, it would actually touch the chair. <clears throat> but we had to, and I'm going to go through my photos. I didn't want to do it because I'm going to, have, going to have to pack this cupboard out and go through a lot of photos. But I've decided that I am going to do that. We had to, all three of us, wear our hair with a middle path in one plait down the back with a material band around our heads in the front and two grips uh, keeping this band in place. You were not allowed to wear your hair in a ponytail. You were not allowed to wear your hair in two plaits. You were not allowed to wear your hair in two ponytails. You had to wear your hair like that. You can help to ask or beg your mother if you can please. It's spring day. Everybody is, is, is uh, wearing um, uh, casual clothes. Can we please wear our hair differently? No, you are not allowed to wear your hair. <laughs> I wasn't allowed to have, I desperately wanted a bang, a fringe, we call a bang a fringe in South Africa. I so desperately wanted a fringe. <clears throat> I wasn't allowed to. So stupidly of me that when my mom and dad went to the shops and they were both out this one day, I decided that I was going to cut myself a fringe, which I did. And after five minutes, I realized what I actually did. Because now all hell was going to break loose when my parents come home. Um, I was going to be in so much trouble. I was probably going to get the hiding of my life. I became so petrified for what I did that I then decided that I was going to cut it off completely. Yeah. So short thinking that nobody would then be able to see it if everything is off there. I would just prolong the punishment to a later stage, which didn't happen. It happened when my parents came home. And I also didn't think of what it was going to look like when it started to grow again because it stood out like this straight. And <clears throat> it was just a disastrous thing that I did to myself. And you would ask yourself, now why would something like that be such a huge issue for a parent? Unless that parent is an absolute narcissistic control freak that should never ever have had children. Because was that really such a big sin, such a big trespass, such a big wrongdoing for me? To have cut a fringe for myself that warranted the amount of punishment that was leashed onto me when my parents came home. And my mother used to hit us with a wooden spoon. She broke many a wooden spoon on us. Many a wooden spoon. And I'm not talking about one slap on the bum or one um, hit with a wooden spoon. <clears throat> when we grew older and we could fought off this onslaught of physical abuse, my dad had to hold us down so that my mom could let loose all her anger and her rage on us with a wooden spoon, which I said she broke many a wooden spoon on our backsides. Um, later on, my, my mom and dad's memory uh, uh, um, what's the word I'm looking for? They, uh, my mom and dad couldn't recall this. My mom said my dad never hit us. Uh, I can't believe that she can't remember that my dad actually, as we grew older and stronger and the wooden spoons kept on breaking, uh, my dad made a leather uh, thing 
that he um, gave us hidings with. It was called the plucky, and the plucky hanged in the pantry. And he gave us hidings with that leather strap. It was thicker than a belt, shorter, and it had a handle, which he, has put, he had put string around, which he glued around this uh, wooden handle. can remember it as clear as yesterday. <clears throat> because the last wooden spoon that broken, and unfortunately that was a slide, and my middle sister has got the slides. I don't have a photograph of that, but it is on a slide. My dad forced us to sit around this broken wooden spoon, which was packed like um, a little fire, and he was now going to burn this last wooden spoon, and we were forced to sit around it and pose for photographs of this broken wooden spoon, which um, was the last wooden spoon that my mom gave us a hiding for before it went over to this plucky, this leather plucky that my dad made. It's three goals. Just remember, not that there's an excuse that a boy must be punished that way, but we were three goals. Just keep that in mind. And um, <clears throat> we weren't allowed to wear pants. There was something sinful and wrong about pants. We had to wear dresses with bobby socks. Bobby socks are, in the olden days, the men used to wear it that comes up to knee high. It was actually very fashionable those days. And um, when we got too embarrassed, when we went through puberty to wear bobby socks that we would have liked to wear nylons or stockings as we call it, we weren't allowed to do that until my mom said that now we are the age that we can, can wear um, nylons, stockings. Although when you go to secondary school, high school, that was part of your winter uniform at a later date stage where uh, nylons or stockings was part of the winter, winter uniform. They did away with bobby socks. Bobby socks was more in primary school, which makes sense because as little children, you play rough. Your nylons would not have really um, lasted. It would have made ladders very quickly because how will little girls now know how to look after a pair of nylons? Bella, Bella is now running in something stinky in front of me. Just... No. Get off yourself, stinky booby. Don't do that. Sorry about that. In any case, otherwise I sleep with a, a stinky little, little body <laughs> in the bed tonight. <clears throat> but in any case, so... <clears throat> um, and the same was with pants. We weren't allowed. He's just coming running in. And the same was with, um, with pants. Then when we finally got to the, we, my mom then realized, okay, this pant wearing thing might be a little bit extreme. We were then allowed to wear pants, but we were not allowed to wear denim. It wasn't allowed to be made of the material denim. She hated the material denim. Don't ask me why, but we weren't allowed to wear denim. Never ever were you allowed to wear the material denim. That was from the devil. Apparently, the mama see boobies. Ooh, get no stinkies. Ooh, nice and stinky. Do you like yourself smelling like that? In any case, and the same with makeup. <clears throat> Where you, as a girl, go to be careful, booby, you're going to um, knock this over. Where, as a girl, you develop through puberty, you naturally go to the stage where you started to notice boys and boys started to notice you and where you want to wear something maybe to draw a little bit of more attention to yourself or to put makeup on. Not allowed to wear makeup. It became such an issue of wearing makeup when you're now in secondary school, high school, you're not in primary school. I'm not talking about 15, 16, 17. Not allowed to wear makeup. That I gave up the fight. I just decided I'm not going to fight about wearing makeup. Not going to fight about wearing stockings or nylons. Not going to fight about all these things anymore. I'm just not going to care. 
Remember I mentioned in a previous um, video that I'm one of those people that like to look ugly. I feel very comfortable and I'm at peace if I look as ugly as possible. Um, if I don't have nice clothes on, which uh, uh, to me it's got a practical aspect in my house because I'm forever busy cleaning, <clears throat> forever have dogs or cats that want to sit on my lap. I pick up my dogs, oh, my ducks, I pick up my chickens and sometimes I've got some poo on their feet. Uh, it's very, very uh, it's, it's a very, very strong <laughs> odor, and sometimes it comes off on my clothes. My clothes that I wear at home, if I work, is ugly. Believe me if I tell you, it is worn out, it is ugly. I like to look ugly. I don't like to look nice. I don't like to wear makeup. As an older woman, it would look to other people as if I don't care. I really do go to a lot of effort for my viewers. <clears throat> Maybe at some some other point I will grow tired and um, just be my ugly old self. And um, but I look, I like to look. In Afrikaans, you say a slon skos, um, just like somebody that doesn't care. And I think that that came from the way that my mom handled the whole situation of having girls grow up, go through the natural process of becoming a little woman. And what happens to girls when they grow up and become little women? So what do you do when your personality is developing and you are supposed to develop in a certain direction and in a certain way where you develop your own style of dressing not what's forced down your throat your own style of what you like your hair should look like how to wear your hair your style of your dressings and you are not allowed to do that it is suppressed and forced into a mold of a mother that thinks that children our property to control and manipulate to make her feel better I don't understand why would you want to control your children to the extent I, I, I can't understand it to me there's no logic or explanation for that but that you get some sadistic pleasure out of it. Got no, no, no idea. Even if I must take a minute to think about it now, um, <clears throat> no, makes no sense to me whatsoever. So as I now go into high school, when in our school system, sec uh, uh, secondary school, if you enter grade uh, 11, you make your final subject choices um, for the career that you, which would be a little bit more in line for the career that you are going to follow when you are finished with matric grade 12. I wasn't allowed to make my own subject choices. I was forced to do the subjects that my mom decided that I was going to take. And that was two music subjects, Afrikaans and English, maths on higher grade and science on higher grade. Three years of doing something which I've got no natural, uh, what's the word I'm looking, the, the English word I'm looking for, ability for. Nothing. So school became a mountain to climb, a daily mountain to climb, which uh, I wasn't geared for. I wasn't equipped, naturally given, equipped 
to actually do, do that. I wasn't. I was failing maths, failing science, no matter how amount of time my impatient father tried to explain it to me. I just couldn't understand it. It just made me, give me a bigger block with the tremendous fights and explosions which would happen around the dining room table. I hated to practice the piano and the flute and you need to do at least, <clears throat> say we, I need to do at least an hour a day on each. That's two hours of your afternoon gone. Um, I couldn't do the theoretical part, apart from the history. Music history is just studying. I couldn't do the harmony. I couldn't do the counterpoint. I couldn't do the dictation. I explained what dictation was all about. I, for some other bizarre reason, I was actually quite good at sight reading. Um, but that's n not any uh, special um, uh, achievement. Um, <clears throat> uh, I couldn't, I, I could do nothing of that, nothing. No matter how hard I try, I can't hear anything. Uh, to tell you this little story, when I played in the, to give you an idea of how uh, uh, bad it really was, if, if when I played in the orchestra, 99% of the people that play in the orchestra are there because they are talented, they are gifted, they are musical. That was their choice. They chose to do that as their profession. When it was somebody's birthday in the, in the, in the orchestra or the conductor's birthday, they will play happy birthday for him. And the different sections of the orchestra will harmonize. So it will sound like a, somebody has written this happy birthday for a symphony orchestra. I could not even play the first two notes of happy birthday. I wouldn't know in which key they started it. And I wouldn't be able to play happy birthday. I do not have an ear. So what must I do? I must pretend. I must sit there and bluff my way with a poker face through happy birthday as if I'm playing. Why am I sit with my instrument on my lap? I couldn't play it. What an absolute humiliation. What an absolute humiliation. That became my life. What, what direction do I choose after school as a profession with two flipping music subjects and with math and science that I failed? I ask you. I begged my parents to do something else. I did not want to do teaching because I hated school. I did not want to go back. And for the first year and a half, I taught with the same teacher that hit me with a ruler over my knuckles as a little child and that said that I wasn't good enough to do music. She was my colleague for a year and a half. I didn't want to do teaching. I didn't want to be a music teacher. I didn't want to do music as at university. I didn't want, I hated it. I wanted to do something in sport. And I know in those days we didn't have biokineticists and um, uh, all the, the, um, the directions that you have. I mean, the one, the one uh, uh, first ed teacher actually in his later days when um, teaching became so uh, uh, unstable in South Africa after um, the, uh, the abolishment of apartheid, he went to Palmer University in, um, or college in, in America, and he converted his phys ed degree into a chiropractical uh, 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 degree. He became a chiropractor, made loads and loads and loads of money I wasn't allowed to. What, what, what do you think you are going to do with phys ed? I would teach mother the same that I would do with music. It's just I would teach something that I love. I wasn't allowed to do that. So, I did athletics at high school, and this is where I think um, 
where my problems actually started to show and nobody took very good notice of it. <clears throat> and with practices after school, I often would have fainting spells. And um, when this fainting spell happened, I would not really come right very quickly. It would take, I wouldn't be able to now all of a sudden you have now recovered and regained, I can't really say consciousness because I haven't lost it. I just fainted. But as I come through, I didn't feel like I can carry on with the athletic practice for the rest of that afternoon. And um, I would always then have to lie down in the shade somewhere. And when my mom came to fetch me because then I couldn't walk home, was it became very um, uh, troublesome for my mother to cart us around, to take us to, to school and to fetch us or to take us to extra mural activities unless she forced those extra mural activities upon us, like uh, singing in the choir. That was a Friday late afternoon activity and I think a Monday late afternoon activity like uh, five to seven in the afternoons, then she will be happy to take us and fetch us. But if it was something that you wanted to do, then no, she didn't have the energy and she didn't feel like doing it. She would like to lie on the bed and read a Mills and Boone book, which was her favorite pastime. And to this day is her favorite pastime. And um, so um, then she must come and fetch me. I would not be able to walk home. And then she would give those teachers hell. And then they were told that if she comes to fetch me one more time, and I am lying there on the grass after a fainting spell, that that would be the last time that I would do athletics, which was exactly how she then um, predicted it, because obviously there was going to be one more fainting spell. I didn't know why it happened, but it happened. And... Um, so that was how that went. But now when I get home, especially after I fainted or I had athletics from two to four, I'm tired, I'm exhausted. All I wanted to do after I had my meal, because my mom used to cook for lunch and then our food was get warm in the, in the, in the warming drawer. Women draws are something that a person don't get anymore with this dough. That's also something that became something of the past. And um, I just wanted to sleep. And I just went to sleep. But then when I did take my afternoon after school and after um, sport, pra athletic practice, I didn't wake up very quickly. I didn't sleep just for half an hour or an hour. I could not get enough sleep. So much so that my mom must come and wake me up at seven o'clock and say, you must wake up. You can't sleep the whole time because you need to do your homework. So if I wake up at six o'clock or seven o'clock, I need to practice an hour flute, an hour piano before I can even start doing my work for the next day. So what would you do? I would rather do my theoretical work for the next day and then fudge my way through unpracticed uh, piano and flute. Um, I had this wonderful flute lecturer which never ever went off on you if you didn't practice and thank you so much for that because um, this was actually the circumstances of my life and um, the piano teachers were horrific. I mean, um, you were shouted at and carried on. As it, it was just a terrible, all around, a terrible, terrible, terrible uh, situation. And um, so often my work, my homework wasn't done for the next day. And um, I ended up being... That's why I hated school. Um, I ended up not doing my homework, not really be well prepared for my practical music uh, lessons. Um, it was just 
not a good situation to be in. And all I wanted to do was to sleep, basically. I wanted to sleep. And of course, if you, um, if you are not a performer and you don't do your homework, then you become unpopular with the teachers. <clears throat> I did mention accounting. The accounting teacher would call you to the front of the room, uh, of the class. You must do some work on the blackboard. And if you didn't know what to do, then she would hit you with a ruler. Humiliating. Humiliating. What do you do? Everybody was scared. Her nickname was Budgie. I think her real name was Mrs. Van Sale. Everybody was scared of her. I couldn't wait for grade 8 to be finished so that I, that I could just opt out of accounting, not having to do accounting. I ended up doing accounts up to account 4 with the help of my middle sister. Thank you very much. Um, for, the, for the business management degree, which I didn't finish, but um, I couldn't do the first elementary stages of accounting because of, uh, my phone is not allowing me to actually um, video record any further. So I'm going to end this video here. I haven't touched on how unpopular I was with the teachers and how unpopular I was with the children. I will save that for a next video. Um, and I'm going to end the video here, going to say if you have stayed with me until the end, thank you for watching, um, thank you for listening to me, you are welcome to comment in the um, comment section, keep in mind I am a, um, a, a highly sensitive person, <laughs> I'm joking, I'm joking, um, and as always keep safe and look after yourself. Until next time.